Every town has its legends. Every neighborhood has its boogeyman. They offered me five deals, and I turned them down. My mother, she died waiting on me. I've been in sales with four-inch stick ice. They put me in front of a door for five years in the wintertime, and they offered me deals, and I didn't take them. If only my mother could be here today to see me for 30 years, they couldn't break me. And I didn't fold, I didn't take no deals. I fought, and I won three times, and they wouldn't let me go. My daddy ain't here today. My son ain't here today. My brothers ain't here today. I lost everything. These were seasoned veteran cops who most apparently had worked their way of knowledge of the system beyond that point. And they knew exactly how to prep a person to get that person, once they have mistreated them, to cooperate, to confess, how to prepare them way before it's time to go in to meet that state's attorney. Uh, tell them y'all had uh, three bottles. Right, so tell them that you had three bottles. Okay, well, what type of bottles? Whiskey bottles? Or, uh, tell them you had some Coca-Cola bottles, some, some liter bottles, because they're trying to make it fit the narrative but based off of what they already knew. See, they had collected some bottles from the scene. Okay, tell them you went to this gas station and you purchased some gas and you was able to put them into the bottles. They called it spoon-fed confessions. And they work with you maybe, man, an hour or two feeding you information. And then they say, well, okay, uh, let's say for instance, the guy in the blue suit, he asks, how many bottles was it? What you gonna tell him? Three. They say, good boy. Oh, so they were getting you ready. Right, yeah, prepping, prepping you. Over how many hours? Like, so, so once you agree. It's only about maybe an hour or two of prepping. That's all that they do. All they want is the basics. So now, did, did you feel like that man in the blue suit? Do you feel like he knew? Do you feel like he was yes, just he taking? Knew. There's no way that the guy in the blue suit could have not known. Because you already said it to him. And now all of a sudden you're changing the story. Not only because I had said it, but area two and three had a dark history of that. And there had been multiple different state's attorneys under investigation for allegedly turning the blind eye while Burge or his detectives carried out acts of beatings. It was a black cop who came out of here on some like plaided type pants with a natural. This is does a detective. Oh uh, yes. Where we where, where this, this station you're at now is a detective. Yes. These areas yes. are full of detectives. Right. Nothing but detectives. There's no blue and whites. All detectives, suits, ties, whatever. Well, the blue and whites are the ones who work behind the desks. Okay. Right. So, 
the black cop came and he said, is this the little MF? And he stole on me, dead in my face. Pow, is what he did. With your hands cuffed behind your yes, back? Yes, with my hands behind my back. Right in the lobby. In the right in the lobby in front of every Sarge. They call him Sarge, like Sarge. And they say, he's in our custody. He's in a, he's a juvenile. He's a, he's a juvenile. And he stopped, is what he did. He definitely stopped uh, probably maybe five or ten minutes after they had picked me off of the floor. Where to take me to? So they took me to this. And so this is the, the cops that they were in your custody. They, you're still with them? Yes, I'm still with them. And they're staying with you? Yes. Okay. So they took me to the third floor, put me in this real small interrogation room. And they remained with me up until allegedly they had been called to return back to their area. Right. That's what they were told. Okay. Well, hey, I have to return back to my area. About <clears throat> maybe 15 minutes once they left. Well, how long did they stay with you? And did they sit with you in the interrogation room? About an hour. So you and them in the interrogation room. And is yes. there a conversation? Yes. Yes. What are they saying to you? Well, they're they see just trying to figure out what's going on. They seem like they were sympathetic towards you? Well, it appeared, but cops are cops. Yeah, exactly. You right. don't know exactly what. You don't know what narrative to yeah. to kind of like view them on. Maybe they didn't stop the beating because they cared about you. They just don't. He, they're, he's in our custody. This is on us. Once right. you take of him, course. you do what you want that's, with him. But I don't want this on me. That's why they did that. Well, I had asked to go to the bathroom. Going to the bathroom, I seen this cop, and he was in there drinking alcohol. Yeah, it's just straight, open, like it was the bar. When you, when you say he was in there, what, what was there? The, the hallway? bathroom. Oh, no, he was in the bathroom. He was in the bathroom, yes. And he was uh, posted against the wall, just drinking out of a heart. Well, he had his feet on the radiator uh, with his hand on the ledge of the window inside of the bathroom just drinking and smoking cigarettes. Was it beer or was it hard alcohol? No, it was hard alcohol. Yeah. I hurried up and used the bathroom and got out because I'm like, man, this is a strange police station because never in the history have I known police officers to be drinking alcohol. So coming out of the bathroom, they actually let me come out of the bathroom, no handcuffs or nothing. And other cops were right at their desk drinking alcohol. And I'm like, what's going on? Well, shoot, I better be working on getting that phone call. That's what's popping in my head. So I can get hope of my moms and I can have someone down here because something here ain't right. I came from a a religious family of uh, hardworking people um, that tried to do right, law-abiding citizens. And um, I later graduated out of high school with honors and went on to college. So it's fair to say uh, you had a strong family unit. You had support. We ate dinner every day, family-wise. When I got to my mother's house, I found out that the Chicago police had arrested my older brother and 10 people in the neighborhood. Sit me down in a room, and then um, they, um, a day passed by. I'm in the room for 24 hours, and then another day passed by, I'm in the room for 48 hours, and then at this third day, they come in and say, well, your brother said that you did it. So you, where did you go to the bathroom? I did not. At one time, I had to go to the bathroom on the floor. Where did you Where did you eat at? What did you eat? I didn't eat at all for three days. For I did, for a total of 98 hours, I didn't eat at all, period. And you went to the bathroom on the floor in the corner? Just came in with an iron, and he, and he burnt me. He burnt the tattoo. Uh, it was some type of iron. Oh, an iron that clothes. I guess it was an iron. I, I thought it was an iron at that time. But yeah. Nevertheless, he burnt me. I still carry the scar on my arm to this day. Uh -huh. And they had recovered the evidence that I had talked about that I didn't know they had. It was sealed from the chief judge. They found him in Florence, Italy. He still had a copy in his files and, and an archive of, the, of my discovery, those photographs and medical records.
teenager, everybody. The rides will now begin, and I hope I see every teenager and every little one out here enjoying the merry-go-round, the Ferris wheel, the jumping jacks, the Easter eggs, and again, I did. Uh, superintendent of police is over here too. I want to say to all of you, may God give you all a very happy and holy Easter. Thank you.